Have you ever felt overwhelmed with all that's going on in the world? Sometimes we don't realize that we can make a difference. My name is Debbie Van Grieken, and it is my hope to inspire you to take small steps towards social impact. Join us each week as we have conversations with those who have taken simple steps towards living a more sustainable and socially conscious lifestyle. If you want to make social impact, let's start small. The Small Steps Podcast is proudly sponsored by Moya Shea Products. As a listener, enjoy 15% off your online purchase. Use code SMALLSTEPS15 at checkout. At Moya, we believe in people helping people. Supporting the local and global communities that help our organization succeed is very important to us. We apply a fair trade framework when purchasing raw materials, supporting farmers and families. Thinking global and acting local, Moya works with organizations to better the lives of children through education and fair trade. Are you looking for the best moisturizer for beautiful, healthy, glowing skin? Our Shea products are superb moisturizers and have exceptional healing properties for those suffering from skin issues. Check out these products and our wellness line at moyasheabutter.com. Welcome back to the Start Small podcast. I'm your host, Debbie Van Grieken, and today I'm happy to be joined with Morgan McDonald, who is the co-founder and creator director of MetaMade. It's an ethical and size inclusive fashion brand that makes clothing for women in sizes XL to 5XL. Made from natural fiber fabrics like bamboo and tinsel and manufactured in a woman-run factory in Toronto, Canada, MetaMade is committed to making quality and responsibly made clothing for all body types. Morgan co-founded the fashion brand with her mother, Carol, a seasoned fashion designer in 2018, and together they have shifted the business model from side hustle to brick and mortar to e-commerce. Morgan is passionate about mental health awareness and with MetaMade has donated a portion of proceeds to Body Brave, a charity supporting adults seeking recovery from eating disorders and body image issues, as well as Black Health Matters, a local organization providing affordable and culturally responsive therapies for their clients in their community. Hi, Morgan. Welcome to the program. Hi, Debbie. Thank you for having me. It's so great to have you here. And we're actually not that far away from each other. We're only about an hour uh, drive away. So I'm sure you're looking out the window today, looking at the gorgeous sunshine we're finally getting. I know. It's amazing. It finally feels like spring is here. (laughs) Absolutely. I just, oh, I so need spring and summer. It's been a long winter. I know, same. I've been longing for this. <laughs> I was so excited to talk with you today because I actually only learned about your brand not too long ago through a mutual acquaintance of ours, uh, Melanie. So tell us a little bit about MetaMade and how it started. So MetaMade is an ethical fashion brand. We are based in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. We make size inclusive clothing for women. Size inclusive meaning all styles are made and offered in sizes extra small to five. XL. We make our clothing in small batch in Toronto, so just in an hour from here, in a woman-run factory. And all of our clothing is made wherever possible from natural fiber fabrics. So most of our clothing is made from bamboo spandex, but we do have some pieces in Tencel, and we're starting to explore other more sustainable fabrics to work with as we expand our line. I love hearing like the origin story. Tell us what made you start this brand. Good question. So we started in 2018. It is co-founded by myself and my mother, Carol. We started during a period where I was kind of I was working full-time in admin job and I was actually experiencing burnout and had taken a leave, a medical leave from work. And I was also dealing with some medical issues. I had uh, ever since I was a teenager, I've, I've struggled with disordered eating. And so during this stressful period in my life, it kind of flared back up and I had finally decided to take the time to go and take recovery seriously and seek outpatient treatment. So I was kind of on this wellness journey. And my mother, who is so supportive and wonderful, was helping me kind of find ways to develop new hobbies and spend my kind of excess time that I had on something creative. And so we started with crafting and eventually developed into clothing because my mom has a 
a fashion design background. She had her own clothing line in the 80s and 90s called Lady Hamilton. And it was based here in Hamilton. Everything was made here in Hamilton. Very similar styles. And we started kind of moving towards clothing, making clothing or designing clothing um, because of my relationship with my body and shopping for clothing. I think the issue for me was like, While I was in recovery, I was, my body was changing and I was unsure of where, I knew it was going to continue to change and I just didn't feel comfortable shopping for clothing. I wanted something that felt flexible and adaptive and comfortable and safe, but also stylish and chic at the same time. And so we came up with this concept of a jumpsuit because it was the springtime and it was a sleeveless jumpsuit, tie shoulder, and it was like a fitted bodice, but you know, a more jogger style pant and with pockets. So it was very, very cute. And we called it the Morgan jumpsuit. And I actually wound up living in it um, that spring and summer. And it really did make a huge difference on my mood and how I felt about my body. And I think with that, it kind of opened up the floodgates of like my mom's creativity. She had this kind of already this history and experience with fashion. So she started designing more and more pieces that were around the same theme of adaptable, like adaptive fashion, something that would fit a wide range of bodies that felt soft and comfortable, but also felt, you know, stylish and chic. And so that is kind of where we started with the jumpsuit. So then I went back to work and we decided to try MetaMade as a side hustle. So we decided to have somebody build a website and we would just offer our styles made to order and just kind of see, test out the demand. And at this point, we had also spent the summer kind of doing little craft shows and pop-ups and yoga studios and Pilates studios in the city. So we did kind of see that there was some interest and appeal, but we just, we decided It was just going to be kind of like a a side thing and we would do made to order and test it out. And then during that summer, I was very involved with other women run businesses and trying to be very active in the community. So I was attending a lot of classes in a space called Good Body Feel. At the time, it was not called Good Body Feel, but it was Ritual Island. But anyways, I was attending classes there and I was becoming more involved in the kind of women entrepreneurial community and also the body positive space in the city. And was also involved with Body Brave, which is a charity that in Hamilton that offers affordable resources and services for adults with eating disorders or body image issues. So I actually attended Body Brave as a patient and then later became uh, a part of their fundraising committee. And so I was just kind of more involved. And so I had through building that network and community, I think we had a natural interest in the brand. And then when I went back to work, I think being supported by other organizations that already had a platform that allowed for us to get a little bit of press. So we wound up, I think we got an article with Hamilton Spectator because not so much about the clothing, but really about the story behind the clothing. And then from there, somebody from Breakfast Television in Toronto reached out and asked us to come and speak there. And again, it was more about the story behind the clothing. Well, it's such an incredible story. And it's like so amazing that you were able to get such a supportive community around you to help. That was really cool. I think that really draws people to there's so many women who struggle with body image and to find a brand that relates so deeply with that and connects with that I think is so comforting to women when they're challenged like that and they're looking for clothing that like you said are gonna make you feel good so that's amazing yeah it was very amazing and it I think It also gave people permission. And I just, I kind of noticed more people openly sharing their experiences Mm -hmm. with, you know, disordered eating or their body image issues. And it just kind of, it felt like the conversation was becoming a bit more mainstream, at least in my kind of community. And it just, it was really awesome. So that's essentially how the brand started. And then, yeah, we were just really supported by community. And then our products are well-made. And I think that's a testament to my mom's experience. And we were able to hit the ground running really, because she just had that 
she had that background, that background. That's amazing. And, you know, there's so many things that make you stand out as a brand, you know, obviously we talked about the connection to women and really providing an amazing wardrobe for all women. Some of the other things that kind of differentiate you from other brands, uh, like I'm seeing so many, why, you know, you talk a little bit about what makes you guys stand out against Mm -hmm. some of these other fashion brands that we're seeing. Well, I think what makes us stand out most is our inclusivity piece. So I think when we first started, most fashion brands max out at 2XL and they will claim that that's like an economical choice, that they don't see a need to produce sizes above 2XL. So when we first started in 2018, yeah, we it was quite unique to have a size offering in all styles, extra small to 5XL, not just have styles for straight sized folks and then styles for plus sized folks, which had been the norm up until recently. Right. Now more brands are starting to be challenged and are more aware that, you know, you have to be more inclusive. There are I think the the average the average woman in North America is sized 14 I think which goes to show that I think 14 is an extra large so if you know anybody above that size is being excluded like what are you telling them so I think the size inclusivity piece makes us unique and we are continuing to expand on our sizing and perfecting it. It's like a constantly evolving. Right. Like, and then what's this gemstone sizing? I've, I've heard this term, like, what does that mean? Gemstone? So we wanted to identify our sizes using something other than numbers. And that was based off of my education in during recovery. I had attended group sessions, like group therapy and often multiple like it came up multiple times that the general rule was to not use numbers that numbers did not I think numbers have been so triggering for folks who had Mm -hmm. disordered eating or body image issues and so they were trying to kind of remove the the value that was placed on numbers so yeah like who the heck is a double zero (laughs) like come on (laughs) like I don't want to see that when I go to shop yeah we just wanted to try something different and maybe shake up the way people thought about sizes as something that was just neutral and it wasn't one size is better than the other just because of the number attached to it so that's what we came up with the gemstone size guide and if you look at it it is supposed to be reminiscent of like the color spectrum So it kind of, our ruby size is our smallest size and that's like a red. And then as you kind of move across the spectrum to the larger sizes, you'll see it kind of shift like, like the rainbow kind of. So that was like our kind of, we were trying to make it very neutralized and just have people look at size as like a very neutral thing. Like it's just, it is what it is. It's not, it doesn't make you any better or less than somebody else that has a different size attached to them. It's just like, so that's why we came up with a gemstone theme. That's amazing. I love it. Some of the other things that, you know, really stand out about your brand is like you've commented before that you're working with some more sustainable fabrics and you're looking also into finding more sustainable fabrics to use. You know, one of the biggest problems with fashion is fast fashion. So things are changing all the time. There's a lot of waste. There's a lot of resources that go into making clothes. So when I find brands that are actually considering the sustainability and really focusing on that. That's what I like to highlight. And so maybe you can share a little bit about the journey of picking those fabrics, finding those fabrics, why they're important to be using and how you're kind of just creating a sustainable brand for MetaBid. So we knew from the beginning that we didn't want that, like we wanted to be part of the solution, not the problem. So, and as a small brand, we kind of started with something that we could easily get access to and test, make prototypes or samples out of. So we started with, and we still use rayon from bamboo and spandex. Bamboo is a, it's a renewable resource. It does grow very quickly. It grows much more quickly than cotton. It uses much less water than cotton. Mm -hmm. A lot less water. A lot less water. And it has a lot of beautiful kind of natural 
benefits to it. Like it's highly breathable, it's temperature regulating, moisture wicking, antibacterial, antimicrobial. So like there were just a lot of pluses and also it feels very beautiful, like Mm -hmm. very sheen and silky on the body. And so, and it's naturally biodegradable. So the bamboo part is the spandex, not so much, but unfortunately we needed like a, most fabric needs like a spandex or something to kind of give it stretch. So until a more sustainable alternative to spandex develops, we still have that kind of as part of our fabric, but we're working with Tencel, which is made from beech wood. And it is, what's beautiful about Tencel is it's, it's also a Jersey fabric like bamboo and it has similar properties, similar benefits. It's, you know, moisture wicking, temperature regulating, biodegradable. The really beautiful thing about Tencel is that it has a closed loop production cycle. So any sort of waste that is made in the processing of the fabric is then recycled and reused. That's amazing. Um, That's so important. This, you know, when you talk about that closed loop and and how it really helps the sustainability. Like I've never even heard of that fabric. When you are doing your labels and stuff, like I'm always curious, what should people be looking for on their label to know that these fabrics are good? So is that just like put on the label? So instead yeah, of like it has be utensil. Legally, clothing, any clothing that is sold has to have a content care label, which says what it's made of, like what fabrics it's made of and how to wash it. Definitely keep an eye out for Tencel. Bamboo is good. It, I think it depends on where the bamboo is milled, like sourced and milled and processed. But bamboo is a more eco-friendly fabric than, say, cotton. Organic cotton is a better alternative to regular cotton. Polyester is like a big no-no. No, no. I remember my grandma always wearing polyester suits. <laughs> yeah, it's so cheap, and that's why you know fast fashion loves polyester. But I think the thing about polyester is when you wash it, there are, you've probably heard of like the microplastics that yes. are released into the water once you're washing your polyester clothing. So it's very detrimental um, to the environment. Linen is very is very safe from my understanding. This is all kind of from my research. Things have kind of changed with research and technology, but like that was kind of my understanding. It's such a complex subject and, and we're learning so much more all the time because it's not just the fabric, it's what goes into processing the fabrics. You talked about cotton and how we use so much water. I mean, I can't remember the exact statistic, but to make one t-shirt, I mean, we're using gallons and gallons of water just to make one cotton and t-shirt always been a frustration of mine because being in this kind of field and promoting awareness around eco-friendly products and you know fair trade and and all this stuff and then every time there's a cause every time there's like an injustice a social justice issue everybody wants to slap a logo on a t-shirt my thought is okay i love the slogan but you've pretty much just decimated like the whole concept of the social justice especially you know finding ones about women empowerment and then the t-shirt is made in a sweatshop you know these kinds of things so it's really about making these connections and understanding what what goes on. And it's so hard for the average consumer until they learn these things, until they're made aware of these issues. It's not something that they think about. They're just like, I want to support that slogan. I I want people to know that I believe Black Lives Matter and I am for women's rights and I'm for fair trade, but they're not making the connection to the bigger issue. So I think it's really important that consumers are able to connect with their brand. That's why I love brands like yours, which are small but growing, small but mighty, great messages, but also are making those connections so that consumers can have a little bit of ease and know that when they're purchasing from you, you're doing that work. You're doing that research for them. So then they you know, have a, a little bit more of a, a sense of relief that, okay, I'm supporting you, but I'm also doing, you know, a good thing in the world. Yeah, no, definitely. I think it's very important for consumers to be able to see purpose in, and I think see purpose in the the brands that they're supporting and also understand the power of their 
like the purchasing power of their money. Every time you're making a purchase, you're supporting an organization or a cause that either is helping us move forward as a global society or, you know, harming. I'm always promoting that you vote with your wallet. So every time you spend a dollar, you're voting for the world you want. And Mm -hmm. that's why we have to make these connections as consumers, because unfortunately, you know, we have been greenwashed by some corporations, you know, they're making it sound like they're doing good, but they're not actually. And, you know, the reality is they're the biggest polluters of our planet. So I really love to encourage people to you know, shop small, shop local, really connect with the brands that they're supporting. I hear that there's maybe some exciting stuff coming up with your organization. So maybe you can share with us some of the things you're excited about. So I'm very excited to say that our spring collection is launching. We don't have a set date yet, but we're looking in April. So next month, those that sign up for our newsletter will be the first to hear about the spring drop. So I highly encourage anybody that might be interested in what we're releasing for spring to sign up because as we grow and as we kind of acquire more customers, we're noticing that we're starting to kind of like clear out our stock a bit. Like we're, we're starting to, to sell right at a more rapid pace. So we're trying to keep things inclusive, but, but you got to get, you got to jump on it. When you see it, you got to jump on it. (laughs) Because we we're going, we're going to continue to make things in small batches. We don't want to see waste. Well, that's it. Exactly. I mean, that's really encouraging to hear that you're, you know, you're getting to that stage where you're selling out pieces because we know that that waste can be, you know, a huge issue and problem especially for small brands too. So it is important for people to, you know, get right on those promotions and and shop when they can. Yeah. And then uh, the last thing is we also have, after almost three years of being in business, we're releasing uh, sample sales and waves. So we've accumulated almost like 600 items of samples or seconds that maybe came from the factory that were just, you know, perfectly imperfect. There's right. some, some sort of flaw. So we are regularly releasing samples to our newsletter list. And those are like one of a kind pieces. And that's really fun because it's kind of like, I feel like a, when I'm like posting any of our samples or dressing them on the mannequin, like it feels almost like um how maybe vintage stores might run. Like you're kind of, you're selling that one of a kind piece. You're not going to ha- find that anywhere else. And so I'm excited to share that we have a very full sample sale coming soon and that we encourage folks to sign up for the newsletter because those will be the first group of people to hear about it. That's amazing. Well, we'll definitely have the links in the show notes for everybody to do that. So that's great. I'm really curious to know, I know you work with your mom. I know that must be uh, both wonderful and I'm sure at times. Ah! (laughs) But how do you guys kind of work well together and how do you come up with the designs for each season? So to answer your first question, working together with my mom is amazing. It is amazing. Very similar in nature and kind of the way we work, pretty independent. So we work very well together. There are, of course, moments where, you know, it's family, like we'll get on each other's um, <laughs> and, you know. And at the end of the day, she's still your mom. <laughs> so you can- still my mom. Yeah. Like I think we'll both tell each other kind of, we'll be pretty straight up. Like we'll tell each other the, you know, blunt honesty, but then in other ways, we are also very like um, forgiving and like right. <laughs> towards each other because you know mother daughter yeah um so it's it's a nice working relationship i would say you know like 99.9 percent of the time it's it's absolutely wonderful and i consider myself very very lucky to be in this position so she is the designer she's the pattern maker she makes the samples and then as a a group we then kind of sit down try things on look at color swatches and put together like a a collection that we can see working as a capsule wardrobe for folks. So we think about, okay, you know, people this season are looking for, you know, a pair of pants, you know, a long sleeve top, a short sleeve top, uh, a dress, a jumpsuit and jacket. And we kind of think of it in that way. We, We think of it holistically as what are those like staple pieces that people, when they're ready to shop for new clothing, what do they want to bring into their wardrobe that will be versatile and classic and something that they can wear across multiple seasons. So we think of it very holistically in that sense. And then we also look at the color palette and the swatches 
very holistically, like what's the vibe we're going for. And then Ashley Melanie, who works with us, she also is part of the design process now as well. So she's part of the conversation about like when we try on samples, how are things fitting, what, you know, needs to be tweaked. We've actually just hired our first two fit models who are plus size that are going to be joining us over Zoom and giving us feedback, fit feedback on some of the larger sizes as well. So it's, it's like a community, it's a group effort (laughs) for sure. But my mom is definitely the genius in it. She does a lot of it. I'm really excited. Like I said, I only recently found you and, and I, so I was going through your website and I'm like, Oh yeah, I like that. Oh, I love that. (laughs) I definitely see myself in some of your pieces. I can tell already that just knowing how bamboo and that feels, I know it's going to feel so amazing on my body too, which is great. So I think I'm most attracted right now to to the jumpsuit, but I'm very curious to see what's coming up for the spring line too. And I love all the colors, but I think for me, it's really about versatility. Like you said, uh, my pieces absolutely have to be comfortable, but I also want something that I can be casual, but quickly dress up. So throwing that jacket over a jumpsuit and, you know, a nice necklace will really just change the whole look of the outfit. So I love that. I love how brands are starting to to get that, right? So it's it's really fun. It is really fun. And I, especially nowadays, I think because of the pandemic, more people are staying at home and they are realizing how important it is to be comfortable. And yeah, I think that fashion is going to change post pandemic because I see a lot of people not wanting to go back to office attire. <laughs> like it's going to be, I think office attire might change slightly. So hopefully, because I mean, I feel bad for uh, a lot of people who who have to wear the high heels and the, you know, pencil skirts and um, my sister-in-law's a lawyer. And, and I, I know that she's probably appreciating being at home and not necessarily having to wear those clothes at all times. So before we end the discussion, I'd love just to, you know, we're always talking about small steps to make big impact. You've talked so much about what you're doing as a brand. I love that you are giving back into the community especially the community that supported you in your in your struggles with body image and so i i'd love you for you just to talk about how some of those small steps that you're doing are making those big impacts like the work that you're doing with your charities you can talk a little bit about that for us it's important to give back to community and for us we were very passionate in like both personally and professionally about mental health And especially now, I think after the pandemic, I think a lot of people made even more aware of the impacts of mental illness and how it's not mental illness and mental health. Like everybody has, everybody has mental health and like, it is something that we need to, you know, take care of and treat as if it's like our, our physical health. And so we truly believe that giving back to organizations that offer affordable mental health resources to the community is ultimately going to improve the economy. It's going to improve relationships. It's going to improve, you know, productivity and it's just going to save lives. And it's just so, I don't know how to describe it. I think just because I've had my own personal issues with mental health, I've seen the effects of not taking care of your mental health. And I understand how expensive it is for those who don't have access to therapy or treatment options. So we do our best to give back to charities that are offering affordable resources and services for people with mental health issues, one of which being eating disorders, which is technically a mental health. We try our best within our means to donate regularly to Body Brave, which is the organization that I talked about, the charity that I worked with in the past. And then we also recently donated a portion of our proceeds in February to Black Mental Health Matters, which is an organization that offers affordable therapy and mental health support for all individuals, but it also has a fund specifically for funding Black folks because that's a group that has less access to therapy and mental health support. So long story short, that is, you know, like I think you have to support the community and each other because we're all connected. We're all leaning on each other. We're all 
part of this fabric of society and like I love it we're all part of this fabric of society that's yeah. cheesy, agree, cheesy yeah. pun there but you know <laughs> it's true oh, that's awesome yeah I really um loved talking to you today and learning so much about your journey and your story and really feel like a lot of people can connect with what you're saying especially a lot of women who have struggled had similar struggles and I know uh you know through my own experience too I've had five sons my body has changed considerably you know used to be an athlete when I was younger and then you know life and five kids and I remember those days of being in a change room and literally crying and not feeling like anything was made for my body or even feeling like I could find anything that would make me feel good in the moment. And so when I do come across those pieces, I know how incredible. And like you said, you practically lived in that jumpsuit. And I know I've had similar experiences too. So I hope a lot of women will connect with your story and check out your brand. We're going to make sure all of the information is in our show notes, but how can people connect with you if they want to check out your offering? Yeah. So so our website is www.metamadeinhamilton.ca. And you can also find us on Instagram and Facebook. Instagram, our handle is at metamade.ca. And Facebook is metamade dot clothing yeah and we're always there like if you send us a dm on instagram it mostly it's me responding so we're very easy to reach and we want to stay connected so that's how you can connect with us that's great well thanks so much i know you're busy and it's stay there where you're doing some curbside pickups so i uh, enjoy and i'm so happy that the sun's out for us that will definitely help everybody's mental health for sure hopefully you can get outside and enjoy a little of the sunshine today too so have a wonderful day. And thanks so much for taking the time to sit with us today. Thank you. You too, Debbie. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for listening to Start Small. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and found a small step you can take today. Make sure you share it with a friend. And if you have not done so yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you are enjoying this podcast, consider taking a moment and leaving us an honest review in your Apple podcasting app so more people can be inspired to take small steps towards social impact.